Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing the two cruciate ligaments of the knee. Those are the ACL, which is anterior cruciate ligament, and PCL, posterior cruciate ligament. So before we get into all this verbiage down here, all the specifics, let's just take a look here at the ACL and the PCL. We notice, first of all, these two ligaments are in very different locations than the LCL and the MCL from the previous video. Okay? Uh, the LCL is lateral on the lateral side of the joint capsule, so it's outside the joint capsule. MCL is on the medial side, outside of the joint capsule, whereas the ACL and PCL both lie within the joint capsule. They're intracapsular ligaments. We can also sort of see this here. If we look at the ACL right here, it seems to be going up laterally, and the, the PCL seems to be going down medially. And so they'll kind of form this cross, thus the name cruciate. Okay? Cruciate means that they cross each other. And so the LCL and MCL do not do that, but the ACL and PCL do cross each other, and that's actually where they get their names. Okay? So when we look at the ACL, one thing to remember about the ACL is that if we're looking at an anterior view of the knee, the ACL has an insertion on the anterior surface of the tibia. Okay, So here's an anterior view. Again, we know that because this is the patellar ligament that's on the anterior surface of the knee, really the tibia. And so because the ACL seems to have this anterior insertion on the tibia, we know that this one is the ACL. That's a good clue. The PCL has a posterior attachment on the tibia. So if we actually turn this around, Here's the tibia, and this is the posterior side. We see that this particular ligament has an attachment on the posterior side of the tibia, whereas this one up here does not. Therefore, this one is most likely the PCL, and this one is the ACL. So the ACL has an anterior attachment on the tibia. The PCL has a posterior attachment on the tibia. So what I'm going to do now is give you guys another trick for differentiating the ACL and PCL that's more useful when you don't have all this detail. Okay? Uh, because, first of all, I can easily tell that this is the posterior view. Uh, first of all, I don't have a patellar ligament. Um, this, there's no tibial tuberosity on the tibia. I can see the soleal line, therefore this is posterior. I can even tell which side is lateral because this is the fibula right here. So that's good and all, but what if you're not given a very detailed picture of the knee and you're asked to differentiate the ACL and the PCL? We're going to look at this picture right here. This is our PCL and this is our ACL. How do you differentiate these? Well, first of all, make sure you're looking at a posterior view. This is a posterior view. And then take a look at my fingers right here. My middle finger is the ACL. My index finger, or second finger, that's the PCL. Okay? So if I'm looking at a right knee, I use my right hand. If this were a left knee, I would use my left hand. But this is a right knee because this is the fibula and this is a posterior view. So I use my right hand. And if you were looking at an anterior view, you would just need to flip your hand around. Okay? So if my middle finger is the ACL, then the ACL has to be behind the PCL because my middle finger like this is behind my index finger. I can also tell a few other things. Since my middle finger is the ACL, it ought to be moving down and to the left. Look at my middle finger. As it goes down, it goes left. Or we could think about it, it's going right and up, up and right. The PCL, since that's my index finger, ought to be going down and right, right and down. Or we could think of it as left and up. Okay? And so that's how you can differentiate the ACL from the PCL, and that's especially useful if you don't have all this other detail here, and you're with, just a, with a very rudimentary image. You can use this trick with your fingers, and it always works. Now, these ligaments are intracapsular. They're inside the joint capsule. However, they are extrasynovial ligaments. So being intracapsular and extrasynovial means that they're inside the joint capsule, but they actually lie outside the synovial membrane of the joint. In long terms, that basically means the synovial capsule or synovial membrane lines the fibrous capsule of the knee joint except posteriorly 
where it is reflected around the cruciate ligaments. What does that mean? Let me show you this picture. So this is a superior view of the knee. This is actually the tibial surface of the knee joint. So this over here is anterior because this is the patellar ligament. Down here is posterior. Okay. So right here, this is my ACL. And then the PCL would actually be this structure right here. Now, if I were to actually outline the joint capsule, the entire joint capsule, I would just follow this, right? It would just be the entire circumference of this, okay? This would be the joint capsule, okay? All of this. However, in blue right here, this is the synovial membrane. So the synovial membrane mostly follows the parameter of the joint capsule. However, notice that the synovial membrane actually reflects in like this, and so therefore the ACL and PCL actually lie outside of the synovial membrane. Okay, This blue line is the synovial membrane, and so the ACL and PCL lie, lie outside of that. However, the joint capsule is really just all of this around this, and so the ACL and PCL lie inside the joint capsule, but outside of the synovial membrane, so hopefully that makes sense. Now the anterior cruciate ligament, ACL specifically, has its origin on the anterior intercondylar area of the tibia. Okay, so when we look at that, what that means is that the ACL is going to basically have its um, origin right here on the anterior surface of the tibia. And if we're looking at an anterior view, as the ACL goes up, as it rises superiorly, it's going to go posteriorly and laterally. But the big thing you want to know is that as it goes up, as it goes superiorly, it goes laterally. Okay, So again, it's going to go superiorly and laterally, but it is going to move back. And it's actually going to insert on the posterior part of the medial side of the lateral femoral condyle. Okay, So as the ACL moves up and back, it goes laterally, and then it's going to insert right here on the medial surface of the lateral femoral condyle. Okay, So hopefully that makes sense. Now the major thing that the ACL does is it prevents posterior displacement of the femur on the tibia. Another way we could talk about that is it prevents anterior displacement of the tibia on the femur. In other words, what the ACL prevents is if we assume the femur was static, it prevents the tibia from translating forward. Okay. So if the femur was static, it prevents the tibia from translating forward. Okay? Likewise, if the tibia was static, it prevents the femur from translating posteriorly. The other thing that the ACL does is it prevents knee hyperextension. Now for the posterior cruciate ligament, or PCL. It has its origin on the anterior part of the lateral side of the medial condyle of the femur. Now, because origin is defined as the proximal attachment, we actually have to look at the back side. So the origin of this is the lateral side of the medial femoral condyle. So we actually see the PCL actually have its origin more right here. And so as the PCL is moving down, it's going to move a little bit medially and posteriorly, and it's going to insert on the tibia on the posterior side. More specifically, it's going to insert on the posterior aspect of the intercondylar area of the tibia. Now, the posterior cruciate ligament is going to prevent anterior displacement of the femur on the tibia. So what that means is the opposite of what we saw for the ACL. It's going to prevent the femur from moving anteriorly on the tibia. So if the tibia is static, it prevents the femur from moving anteriorly. Okay? If we make the femur static, it prevents the tibia from moving posteriorly. So it pretty much does the opposite of the ACE, what the ACL does. Okay? And whereas the ACL prevents knee hyperextension, the PCL is going to be a stabilizer of the knee while the knee is flexed. So for example, when you're walking and your knee is bent during certain parts of the gait cycle, the PCL is going to stabilize it in that flexed position. Okay? So, to summarize a few things about the ACL and PCL, these two ligaments are intracapsular, meaning that they lie inside the joint capsule. Remember, I'm tracing the joint capsule like this, right? 
But when we look at that synovial membrane, the synovial membrane on the posterior side reflects inward, and so it actually creates these extrasynovial ligaments. So ACL and PCL are extrasynovial, but they're still inside the joint capsule, so they're intracapsular. Okay? And in general, ACL is going to prevent posterior displacement of the femur on the tibia and prevent knee hyperextension, whereas the PCL is going to prevent anterior displacement of the femur on the tibia and stabilize the knee while the knee is in a flexed position. And then remember that finger trick when we want to actually differentiate the ACL from the PCL. Okay? Remember your middle finger is the ACL and your index finger is the PCL. And you just have to remember if you're looking at a right knee, use your right hand, left knee, use your left hand, and then make sure you turn your hand appropriately like we talked about in the video. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.